morning, everyone. This is Mayor Chris Capitis of the Township of Springfield, and I'd like to thank you for joining us uh, for this edition of Facebook Live. Um, I hope that this message finds you well uh, at home, staying safe uh, with your loved ones. Um, as promised, I wanted to come to you tonight with an update, uh, both locally and countywide. Um, before I begin, I just want to go over our numbers again, just locally, if you haven't got them. Uh, but the latest as of about 2 o'clock uh, this afternoon, we have eight new cases uh, for a total of 32 positive results. And unfortunately, again, we had that one death. It was uh, an 80-year-old man who was in the hospital for about two weeks for underlying medical conditions uh, that passed away that also had COVID-19. Uh, turning to the county, today we had 226 new cases. We unfortunately had four new deaths, uh, resulting in 1,213 positives and 16 deaths. Uh, so again, um, social distancing, staying safe, staying home when you can uh, is, is the single best and only way to get through this. Uh, and speaking of the county, I am lucky and honored to be joined tonight uh, through telephone uh, by our uh, Union County Board of Chosen Freeholders Chairman, uh, Al Mirabella. Al, thank you very much for taking the time to join me tonight. My, my pleasure, uh, Mayor. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's an honor to be on with you and support your efforts locally in Springfield. And, you know, I'm happy to share some information that we have and, you know, follow up on the good work that you're doing locally and your council members and your municipal government. It's uh, everybody pulling together, doing the right thing for our residents, and that's what we should do. And, and on, on, on in that same vein, I would like to thank you and, and the county for your massive effort uh, in, in, in tackling this epidemic head on, uh, doing everything that you can to slow this down and quote unquote flatten the curve. Um, before we get into it, uh, again, besides to thank you, how are you doing? How is your family? I, I hope you are well. Everybody doing good? Yeah, everybody's great, Mayor. It's, um, you know, it's, it's strange and interesting times it's uh you know but it, you know at, at the same time somebody put it to me as you know a giant uh, pause button and people get a chance to be home and you know uh, work from home or be together as a family we're enjoying that uh, aspect of it my wife is working from home my son now is in the workforce he's working from home my daughter who's a senior in college is uh, doing her studies uh, remotely from home and, um, you know, we're all kind of in it together. It, it causes a little bit of a strain on the bandwidth sometimes in the house when we're all kind of chopping at the uh, internet at the same time. But mm -hmm. we're, we're getting by. We're doing real well. And I, I certainly hope to stay for you and your family, Mayor. Yes, we are. We are doing fine. We've been home and, and, and you know, quarantining on our own, just, you know, staying home, only going out when it's absolutely necessary. You know, and, and, and you have been certainly doing this in your position as role as, as freeholder for quite an awful long time. Have you ever experienced, and, and again, this was through also, you were there through our storms, Irene, Sandy, even 9-11. Uh, have you personally been through anything as as huge and massive as this before? Uh, would you ever imagine going through anything like this? You know, that's a very good question, Mayor. It's very interesting because I was talking to one of the other freeholders and I said, you know, I said, well, that's interesting. I was chairman back when, when September 11th hit us, and now I'm chairman, you know, during this crisis. And, and they reminded me that I was also chairman during Hurricane Sandy. And that was, uh, you know, so nobody wants me to be chairman anymore because I'm handling all these kinds of, uh, you know, big disasters. But, um, you know, we're all pulling together. We're doing what we can. Uh, that, some of those other disasters, in, in some respect, were, were very different than this one because, you know, without power, um, you know, you really we were dealing with people that, you know, couldn't stay warm or couldn't communicate effectively. And, you know, we don't have that kind of a problem during this. It's just that length of this and the, the way this will stretch out and the, uh, the potential for disaster is just very high. People don't continue as you mentioned, Mayor, to do just those things. It's, it's, it's stay home, uh, social or physical distance yourself, uh, even within your household, but certainly in the community. If you have to run out for groceries or gas or whatever, um, 
you know, it's just going to take a long time to get through this. You know, I estimate we got another four to six weeks of this kind of behavior. And, um, you know, but I think you know, I've seen the, the very best in people so far, Mayor, in, uh, in Springfield and around our county. People pulling together, helping, trying to find ways to help their, their neighbors and their community. And it, that, that, that's been a joy. But it certainly is, uh, is a tough spot. And, you know, we'll, we'll remember this forever. I mean, this is a point in time, uh, historically, that is unprecedented. Yes. And we're used to such freedom in the United States, as you know, you know, get up, go out the door, do whatever you want to do, come back, and we don't have that. And that's, you know, kind of taken away from us right now, and we're going to deal with that. But it's all for the right reasons. If we, if we do our part and stay home, you know, this too shall pass, and hopefully we can get back uh, back to business uh, the way we've had it, back to our lives. And we all hope to get back there as soon as possible. But as you alluded to, it is going to take some time. So let's start talking about the things that we're doing here in Union County um, to try to combat this epidemic. Um, first of all, I guess first and foremost on everybody's mind, uh, you've had the Union County Testing Center at Kane University up now for probably over a week now. Uh, it's been very successful. I understand you changed policy and procedures a couple of times to streamline efforts. And, and I think we were talking a little bit before the interview, you're looking to, in some ways, expand this giant undertaking. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about the Union County Testing Center uh, process and procedure and, and, and how it's going? I, I understand you were there today. And, 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 and talk a little bit about the process and procedure and, and how How's it going over there at Kane University? Yeah, sure, sure, Mayor. I'll be, I'll be happy to share that information. So we were the first county to get our testing center uh, up and operational. It's at Kane University on Morris Avenue. And I really want to thank uh, Kane University and uh, President Farahi for opening his parking lot, or I should say his doors, but certainly his parking lot for the drive through center. And I give a lot of credit to the county manager, County Manager Oatman and a Deputy County Manager, uh, Amy Wagner, for their, their vision and their foresight in setting this center up. And it's very different than the way other counties and other sites have been set up. And what I mean by that, Mayor, is um, you needed initially a prescription and an appointment. So that really helped um, uh, dissuade people from just showing up uh, at the center. I mean, some of these centers, People are lining up at 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning, and by 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, the, the tests were all um, mm -hmm. gone. And we had a very methodical, very pragmatic approach to setting up the center, uh, getting it up and running. We started with 100 uh, cases uh, in a day uh, to test. We had uh, moved to 200. Uh, and then just this week, Mayor, as you alluded to, uh, we changed our, our process a little bit. And what I mean by that is we you typically in the past, how we set it up, you had to have a doctor's prescription and an appointment. You still need an appointment, but we have uh, outsourced, if you will, uh, to a call center where people can call. Anybody in the, in the uh, county, certainly Springfield residents that are symptomatic, should call. I'll give you that number of mayor in a second. But um, people can call, go through a series of questions with a healthcare professional, and get an appointment right then and there. We uh, feel like we have unburdened uh, some doctors and some medical staff uh, where people you know, needed to have that extra step and go either get a prescription directly. Now we changed that philosophy and went to this call center. We felt like we can get people uh, in the queue and in the testing process as quickly as possible because one of our goals is, is to get people tested. Mm -hmm. I mean, people that are symptomatic should know uh, that they need to, to do a better job and even more social distancing and, and separate themselves so they don't spread the fire. Mm -hmm. um, so the mayor, I mean, the, uh, the number of mayor is 908 373 5105. 908 373 5105. Call that number uh, tomorrow morning if, you, if people in Springfield are, are symptomatic and by the CDC uh, guidelines, they feel like they have a fever or a, you know, congestion in their chest. Mm -hmm. or some kind of you know, they should call that number, go through the questions, and, and get online. We're actually, today we did 328 individuals from Union County that were tested, and we have the capacity to go up to 500. So we really want to be out front. 
of this, get people tested, understand where they are, and get them uh, get them the help they need. Um, we're noticing just maybe people would find some interest of, of the people that are symptomatic, that go through the process, that go through the testing. Uh, we're noticing about a 55% um, rate of, of the virus. Mm-hmm. So 55% of the people who take that test have it. And, um, you know, we want, we want them to get the help and, and get them out of, out of the mainstream society. So it's working out very well. I'm very proud of the county stepping up, getting that center. It's open for Springfield residents. I encourage people to uh, to call that number and, uh, and and see if it makes sense for them. And and so now when they go through, it's it's a drive through facility. So they would we, they would get off, go through a queue, and then go through under one of the, the tents, and 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 someone would swab them. Is that how it works? That's exactly right. In fact, there's a mul- there's multiple tents you, you drive through. You, you you check in. It's all done with the windows up, uh, over the phone. There's a, a radio station that's been connected for people to listen while they're in the instructions. Mm-hmm. Uh, then they go through the checklist of, uh, of that, you know, show their ID and make sure they're a county resident. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, there, we've also opened it up for first responders that are mm-hmm. even from outside of the county to have them be available to come and test in, the, in Union County. So we did open up out-of-county residents that are first responders who want to get them the test that they need. Um, so people get go through the process, go to the first tent, kind of check in. Then they go through the, the second tent where they um, where they get they get swapped. And it it's, um, it was surreal for me to even you know I was there today. I was there last week for, for uh, an hour or so to come check out the operation. Mm-hmm. But the people, the, the medical professionals who, who emerged from the building. You know, with full gowns and face masks, and you know, not necessarily even the um, the, the masks that, that everybody's looking for. The, the 95 masks. We're talking about full face shields, walking across the parking lot. It's very um, surreal to see that, but that's the kind of protective equipment that you need to, to do the job properly, so that they don't injure themselves or, or take the the, um, the virus back to their families. So and that and that's very impressive and and I congratulate you and and the county for just uh, this massive undertaking, you know. Uh, obviously, we go to the the testing center, at Kane University, uh, to get tested. But so in order for us not even to get there, the biggest and best thing we could do is we both I kind of mentioned at the top was the social distancing. Um, you know, yeah. no no further than six feet. And I know in our town, uh, you know, with. The, the 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 common areas are are shut down. Our municipal uh, areas are closed to the public. You know, it's okay to walk your dog. It's okay to you know jog on your own and and things of that nature. Uh, but for us, for Springfield, you know, we're we we had an issue with our parks, and uh, unfortunately, we had to take down some basketball nets to stop some games from being played. But I know from residents, one of our biggest concerns is Mizell Field. And I know you and I have talked about it. I mean, there's there's so many opportunities there. We have a big, fabulous field. We have an awesome track. We have this big open space. And uh, unfortunately, you know, we have to, to have the situation where, you know, we have people that do want to, you know, I understand people want to work out. They want to they get some exercise. They want to get out of the house. But we still have people on the track that's just not maintaining social dif- distance. You know, what would you say to those people who not necessarily at a county park or maybe at a county park and they're not practicing that six feet, infamous six feet? What, what, would, what kind of response would you have to that? What would you say to our residents? Well, I, I would say you're putting yourself at risk and you're putting your, your whole family and everybody you talk to at risk for for obtaining this, this virus. And uh, if you don't do it for yourself, if you don't care enough for yourself, then care about other people that mm-hmm. you potentially could be infecting. And, uh, you know, I've seen, uh, you know, th- different celebrities, different people on social media try to, try to put out different placards that kind of say, you know, I'm... Um, I'm at home uh, for and you know state state home. Your, mm-hmm. your grandmother, your father, mm-hmm. your brother, and um, you know do it, do it for somebody else. I mean, it's that important. And, and there is, as you know, um, you know I pledge to you that I will be uh, working with the county police to do some you know enhanced p- patrol, not only in my field but the other uh, county parts where people uh, gather. In order to break up some of this, uh, the people who don't haven't gotten the message or, or, or don't believe it or don't want to believe it, but 
you know, this is a very real thing. People are dying, and it's uh, it's not uh, anything to fool around with. And the the more diligent we are in the short run, is the, is the quicker that you know, as you said, flatten the curve. We will get past this and get on with our lives. But if people don't practice that social distancing, if they don't stay inside, if they don't wash their hands repeatedly. Mm. Then you know this is going to go drag on, you know, through through this the rest of the spring and the summer, and nobody wants that. On you know, on the county level. Um, we're talking about services that the public still can uh, have access to. Again, as I said, our municipal buildings are close to the public, but there are still, still things you could do. You still could, you know, uh, fill out paperwork. You can get certain paperwork done, certain services, uh, building permits and, and such if you needed to. What are, what are the services on the county level that people can still... Uh, have access to and and how do they access them? Is it all web based? Do they go to a building? How if, if somebody needs to get out to acquire a county service, what are you still offering and how can they get that service? I think the the, the hub of where I would direct everyone to that needs a service from the county to the county website. It's okay. ucnj dot org, and from there there's up the, the information is updated daily, if not twice a day, with current numbers, as mm -hmm. the mayor pointed out, uh, with other um, information as we're getting it from the state, the governor's office, um, federal government. Um, you know, I, I can definitely say that we've been very fortunate um, in, in this county. You know, our two senators have taken time to have conference calls. Uh, Mayor, you may have even been on some of those calls. I know you're on the one o'clock calls uh, that the county has every day. Uh, the governor has had calls, um, and, you know, we, we feel very connected. Our, our state senators, uh, Scatari, Klein, Tom King, all working together, bipartisanship, mm -hmm. working together to, to, to kind of help. Um, but I direct everybody to the Union County uh, website. There's uh, so much information there. Uh, for instance, if you have something um, in the human services area, if you click on the human services mm -hmm. tab, you can look at it. Um, what's happening with paratransit now? It's, it's um, only running for life-sustaining medical trips. Only other, you know, trips are being canceled at this time. There's information on Wheels on Wheels, and and it's not going to be. I mean, everything is pretty much shut down except for emergencies and mm -hmm. essential services. But keep an eye, residents of Springfield, to that page for when things start opening up. And I'm mm -hmm. sure the mayor will. Be very clear and, and let people know when things start breaking. And you know, he's done a great job. I can say this: you know, communicating uh, with the public, with the residents of Springfield. And this is no uh, small example of, of being creative and getting out to people and talking with them. Um, so I congratulate you, Mayor. A lot of mayors are pulling together. You, you are uh, above the curve on that. Really, are doing a nice job communicating with uh, with residents who want information. Um, so go to that um, website. Um, and poke around. If you have any questions, you can always call the county because any any service is going to um, be held be, be helped through through um, through through the um, phone lines. So the main number is five two seven nine zero eight five two seven four two hundred, and you can get directed from there. Unless you go on the website and find a specific phone number. For instance, if you want to talk about the um, the division of aging. There's a whole page dedicated to the Division of Aging, and the phone number for any of our seniors out there that have a question is 888-280-8226. So there's a lot of information on uh, our aging community and our, our seniors, and, and I hope people will take advantage of the, the website. We've put a lot of work into keeping it uh, updated and putting resources there so that people from home can access information that they need. Excellent. Excellent. Um, speaking of needs and what we need in terms of our services, another big thing that has been talked about not only in our town, in our county, in our state, and in our country is uh, personal protective equipment, uh, namely for our first responders, our nurses, our doctors, our medical professionals. Um, is there any update or is there any uh, other information as you can give to us uh, regarding the shortage of these supplies and how soon or how readily available uh, they, they'll come to us? 
Well, I'll tell you, we're we're, we're uh, scouring the, the internet as, as as best we can, working through our channels and mm -hmm. you know state government and federal government to get those um, those masks and those gloves and all the rest of that stuff. Um, I will tell you, you know, King, speaking of King University, and I'll say Union Union County College mm -hmm. and our vocational school in Scotch Plains all kind of scoured their um, supply rooms and donated everything that they had um, to our medical professionals, whether it was uh, some some areas found cases of masks, and some mm -hmm. people found gloves, and, and they're for students, and they weren't. Oh, so I mentioned the vocational school. Your father certainly had a, a big hand in forming that school, and uh, I remember him well. And I'll, I'll look back at this moment and, and, and think, you know, all the times I worked directly with uh, your dad, Chris, and now with you, it's kind of the next uh, generation stepping up. But but the vocational school has done a, a, a terrific job, and the county college, and people, you know, if, if there's residents on the phone and they have any kind of donations, they can call uh, the office uh, that I, the number I gave, and we'll find a way to kind of pick up those supplies. But we're working on, you know, protecting our, our healthcare professionals. It's, uh, I feel those are the real heroes working, you know, and walking into harm's way every day without necessarily uh, the proper equipment or enough of the equipment. Mm -hmm. And I hear stories of our nurses and doctors, you know, using the same mask for hours when they would change it, you know, five times in an hour. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're kind of still, you know, holding out hope that, you know, you know, some of the companies that are, have been promising to reconfigure their factories to produce the, the masks, we'll, we'll, we'll do that. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's still an issue, Mayor. I'm glad you brought it up. I think it's important for the public to know uh, what we're trying to do is uh, call on all our resources to get them into the hospitals and into the doctor's offices so we can keep our healthcare workers safe. Because if that workforce starts um, starts being out sick, then we're going to have you compounded problems. Somebody wants to take a step up and do their part and, and, and offer themselves in terms of volunteering, you know, obviously limited capacity from home. Would they call that same number, the 527-4200, to find out ways that they can help, whether it be making masks or anything else for the county that they can lend a hand to support from home? Is that a good number to call? I mean that that is mayor too. They could call. Um, they could call also my office directly at, at the county, and we would put them in touch uh, with people. My direct office number is nine zero eight five two seven four one one five. So if people have you know opportunities, well, we'll connect them with uh, where it could make sense or where there is a need. Um, not everything is. Not everybody can can. Um, step in and, and, you know, do everything. But, you know, if people have the will, um, we'll try to find a, a way for them to contribute. And I know uh, Springfield is a very loving and generous community and people are stepping up all over the place. I'm not surprised you asked this question, uh, knowing your community, but um, we need to um, connect them with what makes sense. And, and we'll, we'll try to do that if we can. Th thank you for sharing that, Chairman. That 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 is very well received and I appreciate it. Um, let, let's talk about a little bit about getting through this and, and, and getting out of this uh, epidemic that we have. A lot of people are starting to talk about, okay, we're, the numbers are going up and up and up and all we hear are the rising numbers. Is there any timetable or is there any data being collected about recovery? You know, we've heard, we hear about the numbers of people infected, uh, you know, with this virus. On the flip side of that, is there any talk of starting to gather data on recovery numbers to actually find out when exactly we might be able to get through this? Yeah, that, that's an excellent question, and uh, you may you may remember. I know the, the public did not have the benefit of being on the uh, one o'clock call that you and I are on uh, mm. daily, uh, seven days a week. But I almost asked this very question of the uh, the county manager and the deputy county manager saying, you know, we want to start sharing some good news in this, not necessarily that there's all this gloom and doom. People are recovering mm -hmm. once they, you know, get this virus. They are getting better. They are emerging from this thing. And, you know, we need to start reporting those numbers. And I've asked, my direction has been to ask the, the, uh, the county to the state to try to get some of those numbers mm -hmm. out into the community where we can start showing people that, you know, there's 
you know, 30 new cases, but there's 20 of people that have recovered on those sure. lines. Sure. And I think, you know, we probably better have another, you know, couple of weeks as we walk towards the, I don't know, people calling it the apex or the <laughs> peak or whatever. Right. And then you'll start seeing that number start going down. But I agree with you. Um, we need to start sharing that information. I want to provide some hope for people that, you know, not everybody that gets this is, uh, you know, going to be in, you know, in, in, in the hospital bed. In fact, the recommended um, remedy is to, to stay home and drink fluids and, you know, take cold medication as best you can and uh, mm-hmm. be away from everybody. Don't spread it around. And, um, if people do that, I think we'll get through this pretty quickly. You know, and a lot of the, the the residents that I speak to, a lot of their anxiety comes from these reportings and not so much the numbers, but who it is. And obviously, I don't have to tell you somebody like you, and I, and I tell the residents that obviously the people that it's – uh, that, that get the virus, that, that obviously, by law, that has to remain anonymous. But I would like to say yeah. that, you know, if and when, and this is how something, this is the process of procedure in, the, in the, our town, and I wanted to know how it extends to the county. In, in our town, if, if someone uh, tests uh, positive, the health officer will reach out to that person. And part of that positive interview process is, if you will, is for the last two weeks, our health officer would talk to that person and say, you know, who have you come in contact with for the past two weeks? I say that because I tell the residents, well, listen, if you if you hear these numbers and no one has spoken to you or called you about potentially being in contact with someone, there's really no reason to worry that you may be infected. Is that necessarily the case at the county? Do you go through that interview process as well? Yes, that, that's exactly the process. You outlined it very well, Mayor. I mean, that's what that's what happens. When somebody tests positive, uh, the health officer in that particular town will interview them and then interview all the people that they've been in contact with and determine how much exposure did they actually have. Mm-hmm. And then they all have a protocol for what those people now need to do. Um, so they may need to self-quarantine themselves even though they have no symptoms of like the threat. Uh, potentially having some uh, exposure is enough to have them self quarantine and their families. So there's um, there's a lot of that going on. But you laid out the procedure pretty well. Um, if somebody you know tests positive, they're going to talk to to that person and, and who they've talked to and and try to make some recommendations to kind of halt it right there. Exactly right. And and and, and Chairman, I know you've been on for with me for quite a while, and I do appreciate that. Um, and, and that's really, you know, the questions that I had that is on everybody's mind. Is there anything else that you wanted to add that you would like our residents to know or anyone who's watching this later on uh, would like to know about any updates or anything to watch out for coming up uh, as far as the county's measure to combat uh, the coronavirus? Uh, yes, Mayor. Um, particularly, I want to share some information. We'll start getting this. Um, information out of it's the, the NJ Economic Development Authority mm-hmm. to help our small businesses because yes. I know you're concerned with yes. uh, your local restaurants and your you know nail salons and the, you know, the stores and all the rest of the small businesses. You know how are they going to come out of this? Correct. And there's an economic relief package with uh, small business emergency assistance plans, small business emergency assistance loans. Uh, programs to mobilize capital to micro, small, and medium-sized businesses, uh, New Jersey Entrepreneur um, Support Program, and credit flexibility. Um, we want uh, our small businesses to survive through this and be stronger on the other end of this. Uh, it's a tough time uh, for our businesses, especially our small businesses, to kind of, uh, I'll say this, and I don't mean to be funny or flip about it, but you almost need to hang on to the palm tree while the hurricane passes through. Yeah. And, you know, those people that are strong and, you know, do the right thing and take advantage of these programs are going to come out of this thing and be um, be okay and mm-hmm. reopen their business and, and support their community as they have been. Um, so, Mayor, I will send this document um, to you to kind of show a little bit of information. There's a website to get this information, business. NJ.gov, cv.business.nj.gov. Mayor, I'll send this to you and you can um, post it on your website as you've been um, doing. 
and uh, hopefully that will help our, our small businesses. Yeah. The other thing I would say to you, Mayor, is uh, just really as a thank you for your hard work, your council members' hard work, your municipal government workers who are out there, you know, providing you know essential services to the community. I don't want to forget about your first responders, your police department, your fire department, your rescue squad. Uh, these individuals that knowingly going into harm's way, they do that throughout the year, so this mm-hmm. is uh, not anything new for them. But think also of the restaurant workers that are staying open, the grocery clerks, the post office workers. These are the people that are really stepping up and, 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 and helping us get through this. And I want to really thank them. And, and uh, uh, you know, on behalf of the rest of the freeholders, really, uh, you know, thank thank the community of Springfield for pulling together and, and helping us uh, get through this, and we will. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, you know, and and will as as one of the uh, municipalities within the county, we will ride on your coattails, and it starts from the top down. And we appreciate your leadership and your attitude in terms of fighting this pandemic head on with uh, the county, from the county testing center to the services that you provide, uh, to the communication you've just given Springfield from the county level. uh, You have been always at the call. Anytime we've ever needed you, you've always responded and and responded and then some, and we definitely do appreciate it. I know we we share, we share, as I said, myself field, and we do a lot of cooperative events together. And we always appreciate your, your, your generosity and your help and support in whatever endeavor we certainly uh, have here into town um and, and we do really appreciate it so just to recap everybody ucnj.org that is your website to go to for all uh county business all county uh questions whether it be paratransit whether it be meals on wheels mental health uh the office of aging the office of aging has their own telephone number one 888 280 8226 uh chairman Maravilla's uh phone line for uh, any questions is 908-527-4115. The testing facility for you to call ahead. uh, If you're feeling symptomatic, please call 908-373-5105 for our small businesses who need the help. And thanks to a large part as well as the county, but are also uh, Springfield Business Improvement District, Mike Scalera, Scott Seidel, and the whole gang over there uh, doing a uh, major uh, gift certificate sale for all of our local businesses. But if you need uh, support in terms of the bills and legislation from the county level, it's cvbusiness.nj.gov. Um, and, and, and Chairman Mirabella, thank you so much. I know that um, this was a little bit more time than we anticipated, but I definitely really appreciate We, I, I know you're working seven days a week, but to spend another half hour with me on a, on a Tuesday night is very well appreciative, appreciated. And, and thank you and the rest of the uh, Freeholder Board for all your hard work getting us through this. And, and we wish you the best of luck. And, and please know that Springfield is here for you as well. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Mayor. Uh, best to you, your family, and, and best to the residents of Springfield. Be well, everyone. Thank yeah. you. And again, my guest uh, for this Facebook was live. It was Union County uh, Board of Free- Fro- Board of Chosen Freeholder Chairman Al Mirabella. Uh, we thank him, and uh, please uh, follow uh, my Facebook page in the Township of Springfield uh, for all the latest updates and events for not only COVID-19, but also all things related for Springfield, uh, also the county. Thank you very much. Stay safe, and uh, we'll see you next time.